Welcome to Object Oriented Game Design. And welcome back to Game Design Part 4. This is where we left it yesterday with that. Game Design Part 3. While it's doing that, um, these were the object diagrams that we created when we first started. This is from the uh, first video. Uh, when we just said uh, four objects created, game design, game, status bar, main menu, voila. And where we left it yesterday was uh, 100 frames per second and just a standard frame. We still haven't got the focus right on uh, on this at the moment. If I click on the bar, it's still not focusing. Yeah. No, I don't know. So, these were the object diagrams we first started off, and class diagram where we started filling in uh, the attributes and some of the methods. I've extended these off camera, so save time there. But uh, here's a new object diagram from part three. Now we've uh, created a new mass import, keys import, texture and render class and they're all pretty much connected to game design one except for the render uh, which at the moment is only used in reference in texture for the sprite sheet and we're not actually drawing anything from it yet. So, but that object does exist, it needs to exist for texture to work properly. I, I believe that's why we created that. Uh, mass import we created, but I don't think we filled it in yet. So, it's probably going to be this one today. Let me just save that off. It's me. Uh, class diagram. The first one was uh, just me filling in the few uh, variables and methods. Uh, I've extended up quite a lot um, with two classes at the moment but you can see how these uh, build up quite quickly these were all the uh, attributes we have in GD1 uh, which is a game design one object and these are all the methods including the main the set icon set look and feel get main height set main height uh, get main width set main width and the responsibilities for this object are to create a frame object and a uh, game object. There are obviously a few more in there and they will um, build as time goes on. I think I've missed, uh, I was going to say, I think I've missed the main sound out of there, but that's in uh, game. Uh, get game sound, set game sound. But again, uh, these are all the attributes that we create. I'm hoping there's not many more in game, but uh, I'm assuming there will be a few. Uh, and you can imagine how, how big these diagrams actually get when they when they complete. But we are using um, an iterative and uh, incremental design where we're just uh, hacking away at code and, and throwing the best in that we need for now until the system builds up. Um, the reason for doing that. Is we don't want to get the uh, the system too complex too quickly and not be able to maintain the code. Uh, it's pretty pretty difficult to do with complex systems. This is uh, a free mind. Um, it's called free mind mind mapping program, and I've just drawn out uh, just a few ideas of, or few few deliverables. I would call them. Yeah. So. Uh, game design one is, is the project that we're working on here. Uh, we've got a few resources at the moment in sprites and icons type uh, of resources. We may have sounds and, and other types in here at uh, a later day. The architecture we're working on at the moment we start with the GUI and the input. Uh, graphics we got from the texture and the render and game logic is the frame and the game at the moment. Uh, the development style we're using at the moment are uh, basically agile, um, hacking away, uh, just adding functionality to this uh, this game design at the moment. We we know what most games will need, so 
uh, as far as breaking down um, the requirements for this project we're reverse engineering what we know about games already we know games have a, a start game new game exit game you know a play and we've got a player and and they have sound but we're reverse engineering all that we're not writing it down and then trying to program it in we know it exists um, we're just working from my head at the moment reverse engineering what games but we will be forward engineering uh, doing things in a, in a forward way as well as well as, you know we will write things down we will um, build models and uh, we will get ideas from those models as well which will be uh, forward engineering but yeah the reverse engineering is, is pretty much what we're doing now we are doing it in an iterative and incremental way I'm releasing a video as often as I can uh, once every day once every couple of days and we're incrementing the, the amount of code that we're putting in and the amount of functionality in this this game project we're using code reuse so like I said I'm using a lot of um, churno code or what would you call it notches code and um, how boss let's play or Mac the potato code as well so as well as my own code and, and as well as me modifying the, these uh, these coders but a lot of it is code reuse uh, I'm not um, reinventing the wheel with this code anyway this is uh, mind mapping software free mind free to download I recommend you get it uh, give you ideas to how you will build up your project or what your project looks like from um, different points of view uh, this gives much of a high level view of uh, the project and what's going on at the moment notice I've not put mouse input and, and key input or main menu here um, we're just leaving these as the, uh, the top parts of the architecture really which refer to the architecture same with the sprites and the icons but yeah free mind get that it's, uh, it's a good tool uh, what else are we using and this is omelette you didn't see any of the other videos um, this is to create object ma uh, object diagrams and class diagrams and use case diagrams and all types of things but yeah this is good for modeling the system as you can see the system becoming more complex uh, just in this sp short space of time we have how many numbers of classes uh, two four six <coughs> we've got eight classes at the moment uh, which is a knock a number of classes and um, this is how you judge software and it's complexity uh, the higher number of classes and the higher uh, locks lines of code um, the more complex the system is and the less maintainable uh, potentially is as well if, if you get lost in the code um, you've not got good uh, comments in your code and you can't follow it anymore then uh, that's when things get out of hand but this is why I'm doing these diagrams and the models and, and such and adding them in as well um, but straight back into the code here I've created a, a new project but I've not copied anything in yet I did the res obviously off camera because it keeps crashing on me so I'm just grabbing these packages here first do I leave that one? No, I'm going to leave that one for last so copying down the graphics GUI and the input uh, into the source package and then I gotta deal with game and game design for you uh, code move it into the new game design for all right. All right. paste the copy okay so this is where we left off yesterday with the game design for free so I'm just going to grab all this code here um, including the imports and paste it into this game design for and change a few of these Yeah, we did uh, get to change these comments here as well. Um, yeah, that's right. Game design four and that one. And 
That shouldn't be there. Now we've just got a few of the uh, game references to sort out. Let's close yesterday's files. Game, that's yesterday. Well, there should be no errors in there, but seven years, one error. No. Forgot a number four. That's done. Game is uh, referencing the wrong package. Yeah. And I think that might be it now. Key image, key input, main menu, texture. All referenced in the uh, game in the one package. And we need to reference these properly. Okay. I should really just be labeling the, the projects game design for and then just call this game design. But uh, anyway, you live and you learn. So I just need to copy these to uh, resources. And we're so welcome back to uh, game design part four. Uh, excuse these extra parts at the start. I, I do like to show you what I'm doing, um, even if it takes slightly longer. But uh, as you can see from this point of view, the code point of view, this is uh, as far as we got yesterday. Um, I think we were in render. And we're looking at these characters here and the scale draw at the bottom. So I'm going to finish this this part of today and try and sort this this fonts out. That really should be a different texture um, with the uh, with the characters on it. Uh, I did it completely wrong the other day, and we need to redo that. But um, straight into the scale draw uh, the render. This is the one with the color and the X offset, Y offset. So uh, inside these are going to be a for loop. And inside the for loop, got an int Y equals zero. Uh, as long as Y is less than H. On scale, mm, that's the wrong one. Oh, well, we'll carry on. Uh, we'll change the constructor. Uh, height times scale. Y plus plus. Then we need our in inside here. Is a bad idea, but anyway, y picks equals y plus y offs. And we're going to hit. And inside the if, it's just continue. The statement it's checking is y picks so less than zero or y picks greater than or equal to height. 
then continue. Then we're going to do with the uh, Why is that having a problem? Because you can't find the wires and that. Okay. After the uh, if statement, we've got to deal with the X and the width. And again, that's got the similar sort of code for that. We'll paste that on as well. Um, W and X X picks equals X plus X offset and then you do check on the X pick but it's not high of split greater than what yeah greater than equal width or less than zero. Then continue. Um, all that's done. We do it in source uh, equals bitmap dot pixels. Uh, array. Cast in this bit to an int. That is our x. Got the scale. Uh, plus x r. Yeah, okay. And uh, let's plus in cast. Why uh, over scale? Plus why? Uh, and then it's times bitmap width. Alright. So a few of these be changing up there, that's a bit much. Then we need a double. Called scale. Oops. Then we need our X off. And a Y off. Then an X O, Y O, width and height. But no color in this one. I think we had the color in uh, another one. Alright, so that needs removed on. Whip fire x y and these are off. That's one scale draw, there's another two to go. Alright, still haven't finished this uh, line of code though. Okay, um, Right, uh, after we've done this one, we need the source to be used, so it's another if statement. And it's pixels array equals source. Alright, 
your argument is x pick minus five bits times with equals source, but sources are better be greater than minus one. But that's not uh, using any colors, and I don't think it takes the pink into the background either. But uh, that won't be in at this part, we've already taken that out when it's loaded. So that's the first scale draw. Need two more of these, it's slightly different arguments. So the second one is uh, identical to that, but it uh, does have the color. This is also an end. And codes are identical until you get down to the pixels here. And it's just source times color. To add whatever color you want into this, and um, it's scale draw. But because this one's not in use, it's not that yellow text there. Um, that one must be in use with these variables here. But this has got the color on the end, so unsure there. Maybe it's the next one. So the third one, if that's right. Um, In color. This one's completely different, I think. So bitmap and scales and in. Then we got the X offset, Y offset. And the rest is the same. So just changing that to an enter there. And the rest is identical. So saving that, that's the scale draws out the way now. We've got about five or six draw methods. Um, I don't do the draw text and draw string ones. Did I do the draw string one first? I did the draw text, so let's do the draw string, which is almost identical. Alright, draw string. X, Y, and color. So we're not going to be using this scale now, and this just goes to a draw method, which doesn't exist yet. And that will be fonts I sixteen Y double X times six. Uh, eight five eight color. Yeah, that's correct. Um, that needs creating. That needs removing. Needs up down. Right. Just need to create that for that, but we uh. We don't have this draw method either. Um, so over to texture, we've got the uh, sprite sheet one there, load bitmap. We need identical um, resource, but a, a different file name. So I'm just going to do that and call it fonts. And I believe this is from uh, uh, Notch. 
Okay. Uh, the font's file at least. And yeah, I think it will be in sprites. This is going to be font one. Okay. Uh, again, we still need these comments on these. I know they do take time, but it's worth putting them in. So I'm going to do it on there. But yeah, I still haven't done all the all the comments on this far. Uh, save back to render. Fonts is not coming up. Uh, it's still doing its background scan, slow computer. Now I can't find the draw. Uh, so let's go ahead and, and create that. The uh, the next draw method, just a bitmap X and the Y. So we need to find one with the bitmap X and the Y and save time. And the scale draw has got it, so we'll use that. Always trying to f always try and find a piece of code that's already written uh, to save you typing the whole thing out again. It really does help um, when you're building up these large complex classes. Can take literally hours, but I won't bore you with the details. Here we go, draw bitmap. X and Y or X offset and Y offset. We'll keep those two there. They mean the same thing, we just need to program them as if they were X's and Y's. So um, this is just bitmap height. And the rest is the same, and I think that's just bit my width. Oh, see how easy that was instead of retyping all that code. That one is done. We need to uh, update this. And it's bit my X and Y, isn't it? Right. And we still got source at the bottom there, so let's sort this part out. Uh, there's no color, that's fine. The source is bitmap pixels x plus y times bitmap width. So we've got a lot in there we don't need. That should just be x. That's y times bitmap width. That's fine, then x pixel y pixel times width equals source. But there's no if statement in there for some reason. enough. Okay, we've got three draw methods. Three to go, I think. No, four and they're all bitmap. But the rest have got scaling, so I'm not sure if we should use that one or the one we just used to start that one. The scale draw, isn't it? This one is bitmap scale width, scale height, x, y, width height. Yeah, I think we better use this. And this one is draw bitmap. Uh, this is a double, and it is scale width, and we've got another double, which 
Jesus, go. Right. Let's offset Y offset. Width and height. And the next one will probably be with color. This one is without color. Um, and bit more. Right, so inside here we're looking at scale H for the top one. That there is with the height. Copy scale width for that one. Just in case we want to draw something and scale the width different to scale in the height. We can scale them both at the same time, but sometimes you might want to stretch an image, you know, horizontally and you might want to stretch it vertically. You might not want to do them both at the same time, so that's what that's about. Now we need to figure out these bits at the bottom left. <coughs> so I've added uh, a new piece of code in here to deal with these and create two more ints. One called um, scale width and an int called scale height. S uh, C H and S C W. And I've cast the uh, result to an int. Um, and the result is of uh, x shared by scale width. And copy that down. And the scale height is y and height, I think. Okay, so now we've got integers we can plug in there instead of uh, casting them. That's why these are created, I believe. So it's going to be uh, int source equals bitmap pixels. Uh, SCW. Uh, SC height. And bit might work. Yep. And then there's no checking the source again. Sometimes you want to do that, sometimes you don't. So don't question me on that, but yeah, it might be right. And that's just source, there's no color in there at the moment. Okay, the next one looks identical with color. And it is. So I'm going to copy that after I've completed these comments. Right, so save me typing all that again. I'm just adding that color to the source and the comment. I'll add it to the source here times color. Add it to uh, module name here uh, in color the arguments here. and we're gonna have to add a and here oops done it again okay draw bitmap scale width scale height X offset, Y offset, width, height, color. And then it breaks it down using those variables and then cast the ints here instead of putting all that in there, which actually makes sense. I should do that in the other modules as well. Create a couple of variables, throwaway variables, and uh, save the, the line of code here. But um, yeah, we'll work on. Uh, refactoring the code at a later date. Got two more draw methods there. Draw uh, 
uh, this is x offset, y offset, x, y, width, height, color. Have we not done that one already? So, I'm getting lost here. We've got the red bit mark with the x, y, width, height, the scale, the scale are done. Yep, this is the next one. And there's no scale in this one, but it's very similar to this in that it does have the color. So I'm just going to copy this down. And I may keep these variables in and instead of messing about. Okay. So just to check the, uh, the arguments bitmap in X offset. Y offset. Then we need the in X zero and in Y zero. <coughs> and there's an extra line of code in there that I've created in uh, the width comes bitmap width. Again, just creating a throwaway variable there. Um, and that's used down here with the uh, the arguments again. But these here are different. So this is X plus X O. This would be uh, y plus y of. Okay, and they uh, they should be plugged into the bitmap pixels down here. Um, I don't know if that's the right thing to do. Create that b width there, but these should just be height. This is no scale. Um, but it does check the sources greater than zero, greater than or equal to zero. Okay. I think that's so you don't add color to a, a pixel that doesn't exist or it's supposed to be transparent. Right. Final draw me uh, method. No color. Looks identical to this in some ways. So. Have we done all this correct? No. We need to add. No, why is it working hard? Just that's uh, X O Y O. Right, yeah, bizarre. No scale. Right. Final draw method. Again, it's pretty much identical to this without the color. So, a bit more X O Y O width height. Without the color. So, quite a bit of these changing there. That's fine, that's fine. There's no X offset, 
So y of x just equals y. Again, there's no x offset, so that's this going to equal x. Oops. Oh, why am I keeping n? And again, there's a check on the source. These variables are the same. And there's no color. Okay. So let's get rid of a few here. Color. Bitmark width high x, y. There's no x or y offset. Same here, and the same now. All right, that is the render class done, completed. We've got um, how many draw methods? One, two, three, four, five. Uh, five draw image methods, two draw string methods, and then we've got a scale draw uh, images, three scale draw images. I guess we could do a scale draw text as well, um, which I think I think is what one of these is referring to. I'm not sure these are complete yet. Um, is a draw text. No, that scale draw is done, that's fine. Because the, um, the scale is being passed in here, and then um, we're using uh, an image file here, a bitmap, to find the, the font so we can actually scale it up. That's not a problem. But it, again, this, this sprite sheet needs to be the, the right size. And we don't have one created yet. Or I, I do, it's in another package. Um, but we'll move on to that. I don't think we need uh, text on the screen today yet. I don't know. We have some. Anyway, moving on from the render, what can we do next? We need to complete the. Uh, the mouse. Let's just run that, make sure there's no errors. Oh, here we go. Uh, set icons got an error. Alright, it's not found the um, the res folder. Have. have I added it in? Always good to test things. Probably should have done that before we started. There's the res folder there. Um, maybe we have to add it as a library. Game design two, no game design four, res folder, open, okay. Uh, excuse me. Uh, then the image no on the load bitmap. And a set icon. Why is that? Icon GD16 get image. Icon GD16. Alright. Strange. Texture. Ah, right. It's because of. Um, I'm trying to load this before the icon or well, the icon it is loading from this class texture but it's also going through all of these load bitmaps as soon as it accesses this file for the first time um, so sprite sheets fine it will find that it won't find uh, gd1 font because that doesn't exist yet same with the player 1a so sorry uh, yeah comment that line up 
and then we test it. And it should find the icon. Fine, it's been finding it before that, so yeah. And this is going to be uh, version 3, I believe, so we need to change that in game. Uh, right at the very top. Version 3. I know we've not added much to the screen today, but uh, once these render classes out of the way we can, and now uh, the inputs, we can start working on the player, um, which is just going to be a generic player at this point because I have no idea what kind of games you want to create with this. Uh, I'm just basically doing the architecture in the background. We're going to think about game logic and, and detail level design at a later date. Just want to get all this code in at the moment. Um, this is going to need comment or not in the draw method because the fonts don't exist at that point. So we can't use draw string because it would lead nowhere at this point. But there's no errors in the code now.
like a little bit of time, a bit smarter. Um, a lot of this is a lot of news at this point. Um, setting up the future. They need the construction of the house. They need to be the house. I 
it's um, it's very important. It's very important. It's very important. It's very To this player class, level class, powers, and enemies, and that uh, we do need some sort of animation on the player. Um, I was thinking we could just draw a box, but then uh, you'd see the box move left and right, up and down, but there would be no animation on it. Um, and we do need a few different animations for the player just to denote that it's. Uh, moving left or right forward or backwards so we gotta look at player design at this point 
uh, through the years of arcade games, you know, the, the main um, sprite that springs to mind would be Pac-Man, where, you know, it moves left, right, up and down, but he's, he's got a different image for each one. Um, what else? 1942 uh, arcade game is, um, is an old war game, uh, and the main character is a plane. So again, you got animation with the plane moving forward, backwards, left and right, uh, and then you got bullet animation as well. Uh, but in that game, 1942 is is where Pow first started to, to come into it. But if you collect a Pow, the the player upgrades not to uh, one airplane, but three as two side planes. You know, backing it up if you get the right Pow. And in that same game, you could shoot the powers, and and they would change uh, to a different power. Um, so that's something to consider. But we do need some sort of imagery for the player and the power, and then we're gonna have to start thinking about level backgrounds and, and stuff like that, uh, and enemies after that. But straight into the player here, if I can. This is five twelve by five twelve. Um, image I've just changed the background to the bright pink um, but although we, we don't need the bright pink I'm just coming to think now uh, this is probably going to be a transparent background so we're looking at something like that but I, I put the pink on so it was easy to see I think um, in addition we're going to need to go show grid on this one uh, each of our um, sprites is going to have to fit in one of these large squares here and then hopefully we'll be able to read in this, this one sprite sheet for the uh, whole selection of sprites but we're um, going to have to create a new layer on that at least Trying to think, uh, what's the best way to do this? We duplicate that there. Uh, hide the original. Uh, grab both of these and scale them down with a free transform. Thank you. And then both of those uh, layers are the same size now. And then basically we can copy those over. I'm just going to zoom in to 800 on this. Type 800, click return. Then we need to where this, uh, excuse me, sprite is starting. There we go. So it's almost the right size. I would probably, uh, if we transform that a little, it's supposed to snap to grid. And it's saying that's grid, but clearly it's not because it's, uh, a few pixels over in, in both of these, but as long as our uh, sprite is in the center, here, that's really the main thing. Um, so this would be the pink layer. This is uh, uh, SPR one two three um, G, and this layer would just be SPR one. Okay. Just so we don't get confused here, we know which is the background, um, which is the actual image. We don't want to paint on the background, we're just using this as a reference to make sure everything's in the center. So, speaking about a couple of sprites we, we were earlier, uh, I'm just going to go in and try and imitate a, uh, a Pac Man if I can find a circle. Yeah, Eclipse Tool will do it. So, He's basically just uh, a round character with a mouth. Um, does that look about right? Well, it's slightly off center there, but uh, that should do that. Uh, can I move it with this to make it any better? No, we need to free transform it. Oh, well. all right. So those two lines look identical. That's like an equal arch across those two. And 
keys lock that identical as well to this side. I'd call that right. Okay. So we need to rasterize this so this circle um, around the, the edge here is not annoying. Is that just because it's selected? Okay. So that's what it looks like. Uh, selected the background. So we can't see that now. We do need to do some ingenious delete in here. Um, and we do need to rasterize the layer from a shape and turn this down from 13 to we can try one pixel I don't know if this will work very well alright so just gonna create an indent here the center now we say the um, the diagonal on it would be down as opposed to up so I'm just gonna do a 45 degree angle there if I can And then we should be able to get rid of this bit in the middle. I'm just going to define that a little more. And grab the paint tool. No, delete is the one. Just going to be one of these. I've got the wrong um, brush here. That's not mine. Excuse me a minute. Yeah, sorry about that. So, yeah, I had the wrong brush here, so it was going all over the place. I'm going to have to go over this again. Um, as you can see, it's not the pencil brush we're using, which is a shame. It really would do better with the pencil instead of that. Oh. I'm clicking here and it's, it's six pixels away. Getting there slowly. Alright, so I'm just gonna do select tool at this point and delete that area and do the same there. And the same there. Alright, so if I deselect and go back to pencil tool. Should be able to straighten this out. Now again I'm still off by one pixel. I really don't get this. Yeah that just don't make sense to me. Although I'm only off one pixel if I do it down there, if I up here, it's all over the place. Yeah, I thought this would be a quick thing to do, but obviously my computer is being a bit shady today, you know. Just wants to do its own thing as usual. Ah, uh, you bore me. Paint tool. There we go. Oh well. That really worked well. Yeah, that's just lovely lines.
Uh, so that would be correct. Yeah, similar. Oh, would you fuck up? <laughs> That's not integrated when well, I'm doing it properly though. Yeah. Delete. Pain bush. I don't know, dude, man, that's terrible, that's... Don't know if it's the mouse or my eyes or what. Yeah, okay, so that's moving left. Obviously, we're going to duplicate this over, do a right, and then move it around to the left. I mean, an up and a down. See, I don't even know where I am today. This grid snap is not very good. That puts that in the identical position to the first one right in the center. Um, what we need to do with this is not uh, SP1 copy, it's SP2. We need to flip this round. But again, I'm, I'm not going to move it. I'm just going to transform and flip horizontal. Which looks just as bad as the original. So that... At least that matches. Okay, so we've got a left and a right. Um, now we need an up and a down. I think what I can do here, this is not background copy. This is sprite 2 background. Um, I'm just going to grab all four. Duplicate. And then I'm going to move these down. And because I've got snap grid on, I get select the right tool. I should just be able to move them straight on. Oh, that's terrible. Okay. So we've got the pink background coming through. We're probably not going to use the pink background in this, actually. These are probably going to be um, transparent in the background. So you may ask, why am I using pink if it's going to be transparent background? Because I need the snap to grid to make sure these are centered. Um, so you don't get any chitter in between the animation. Uh, you don't want it slightly off center on either one of them. So let's turn off these last two. And um, work with Sprite 3 background. And this will be Sprite 3. Alright, so we're looking at a uh, up or down on these ones. But note that um, Pac-Man does have two left animations and two right animations. Uh, one with mouse open, one with mouse closed. So we do need to sort the close on both of those as well, but we'll come back to that. This one needs to be rotated. Uh, 90 degrees clockwise. That'll do for a down. 
So I spike four back up. Spike four is up. So it's ninety degrees anti clockwise. The same thing. Um ninety degrees counterclockwise. No. One eighty from there. Oh. So we've got a knock down left and right. Then we need uh, two for each. Just trying to think the best way to do this. We should have kept the original uh, circle. And there's no way I can revert back to that because I didn't keep it proper. But anyway, okay. So we need to turn these uh, into the same things. If I just grab Sprite 2 background and that. I move that right one across. Oops, wrong tool. Deselect. Uh, move tool and just move that over to one. Over across. It's this one I need to duplicate again. Sprite one. Duplicate layer. Move layer to the next box. Right, go. Now we need to close mouth on that one. And uh, this is right one A. Um, also known as right A. Right one A background. And right one A. So working on this one, we need the. Uh, Paintbrush tool, right color, and just fill this in before we make a uh, the mouth opening again. Right, um, that's fine, but the yeah, the mouth open one we can just duplicate that over. For all the rest, this should work. He says, All right, double that up. All right, chop that up. Oh, here we go. If you go on one line, it does it up. Two lines above. If you do it there, do that. Uh, looks like it's got a funny colored tongue. Get rid of that. Just should have done in the first place. There we go. Right, so decent that. Now this like he's opening and closing his mouth, I guess. And he's, he's walking along, rolling along, however you would put it. But now we need to duplicate this one, which is bright A, the bright A background. Uh, duplicate layers, okay. And we need a copy of uh, here on this one. Just so I can see it. Is that right? Yeah. Now we just need to uh, change it around and call it some else. This is 2A. Two 2A two background. Two 2A image. Alright, the 2A image is the wrong way around, so we need to flip it. Free transform, uh, flip horizontal. And OK.
Oh, it's not moved from there, that's fine. Uh, we need the background and that image. Duplicate the three A. But we also need to make space down here for three A, so let's move these down. And then grab these and move them along so that's sprite 4 and sprite 4 background. I want to move on to the left, right even. Alright. I can't remember what this was. Uh, sprite 8 copy, background. Let's duplicate those as well. Um, just work on the rotations. So that is actually going there. Alright, which one is which? That's correct, according to that. But this needs to be. Uh, this will be three A, won't it? Three A background. Three A image. But again, it needs to be rotated that once. Three times four. Rotate clockwise 90. And uh, that's the wrong way. Okay, rotate 180. Okay, so that's done. Now we just need the up. Which is off in its background, so let's select the background. Okay, let's select the right tool and then select the background. This is 4A background. And that's 4A. Ah, uh, but these need moving. Just slightly align with the rest which is this one is too so that one is sprite free background now and sprite free image just pull that up so they're all identically aligned uh, um, same as these up there We don't need to worry about these lines here because we won't be putting out this pink in the background. Problem is, this is slightly off center. There's none of these lines here, so like there is here. So I would say that was off center. And if I move that, then all the rest is going to be like that. I think that's fine. Um, these might need moving back though. Let's sort the up part anyway on this one. That is. Rotate one nine clockwise. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, grid snapping is uh, not done very well, but here is our images. Let's just zoom out to 400. Yeah, not very good artistic uh, skill there, but yeah, we've got. Two for the right, two for the left, two for down, 
and two pop. <laughs> Shall we do airplanes as well? Um, <clears throat> Leave it at that now, but let's turn off all these uh, backgrounds. So that'd be the start of our sprite sheet, but. I'm going to print it out with the transparency. These grid lines won't show in the final uh, thing because they're just part. That's all you'll see in the image when it's finished uh, printed out. Show grid. That would just help line things up. But um, yeah, let's be player one then, sprite sheet. Uh, save for web. Obviously, we're not going to be doing the Pac Man game. We may do, I don't know, but um, this is not the final character of the game. This is to test out that things like key inputs are working and the characters moving correctly, and these can be used to set up the animations as well. So, basically, that's what we're doing. It's 512 by 512, and each of these I think is 32. It could be 16, but we'll have to figure that out. Um, there's four there, could probably put another six there. Yeah, that 52. Yeah, could be 16s. But we'll, uh, we'll figure that out when we program it. So this is GD1 um, Player 1 sprite sheet. Which we will be adding to, but uh, why have I got cap locks on? Yeah, player one sprite sheet one. Yeah, that should do it, and that should have been capital. Right, so that's another image that we can program in. Copy. Um, Gonna need to save the uh, PSD as well. Documents. Game is on one, so it's uh, same name. Without the PNG GD one dash P one dash sprite sheet one. Okay. Again, that's just so you can uh, change the originals if you need to, and no one knows will probably need to. Right, straight into the player class here. So if I start with this line of code. If net beans don't crash, because I've just rushed into it. Um, notice we don't have a player variable in game, so we need to set one up. Um, I normally don't create the player until the level is created, and the level is normally created first in uh, game, which in turn creates the player, but it still creates a player um, in the game class. Uh, I don't store the player. A uh, variable in level, everything is controlled in game, which makes more sense. You know, game is the information expert on both player and level, although level is uh, more expert on the current player, if that makes any sense. Each game needs a player, but uh, each level will have a, a player current status in that. All objects and variables. And Right, so if we create a uh, a field player in the game class, hold it up. 
an object and it's giving it no uh, comments so it's going to be a player I have no idea why NetBeans just decided to put it there instead of at the bottom or the top but there you go, it's got a mind of its own uh, but because it's a player it is a link not a variable so let's make sure we put it in the right place And we still have the, the menu object that needs some uh, comments, but it needs creating as well. So, okay. We've got this player object in game that we're going to initialize in level when we get that. Excuse me. Um, so we can render it out in screen. But it needs to be uh, a static, I, I believe. In fact, I don't think we can use the word player, I think it has to be P1. Let's give it a P1, let's see if that makes any difference. No, you must be able to use player because I've used it before. Alright, so anyway, we need to create this player class, but as far as the architecture goes, you know, it's not part of the the frame or the game is actually uh, um, part of the architecture in its, its own right. So I'm going to create another package here, or another class called player, then a new package yeah, called player also. So the new class is uh, player. And we need a new package called player too lowercase obviously not to get confused uh, uppercase for class names lowercase for package names and uh, variables is lowercase as well unless it's two words and then the second word starts with uppercase here we have our player class now we need to import player And it is a public static because we need to access outside of this class. Whereas mouse and key input might be private, I'm not sure. But we do pass it through to the player in the tick of game, uh, which I believe we've programmed in, but commented out, no? No. So in here, we need to uh, update the player, uh, tick the player with a few variables and that means that the player class has a render and a tick method but you know me uh, lazy as usual I will always try and copy code rather than having to type it out especially as this has already got the comments on and almost the correct uh, constructor uh, it needs a render or a screen there or render even uh, as the parameter for their render but this has got comments on so I'm nicking this it's in the player class uh, we don't need to import both of those this needs to be render and common name is target as in your target render which means I need to change that to target and we need to import these and close this off. Okay, save and import render. Can we import all the graphics? Do we need all the graphics in player? No, screen is extending render, so that's included in texture. We call that directly. So now I'm not going to um, import the whole package though. Graphics 2D is an all. We might need all again, so I might change that to package. But there's our render class in player anyway. Uh, we need a tick, and screen doesn't have a tick. 
game as a tip with comments copper uh, render and then tick okay leave that there so what else do we need in player got the render we need the tick we got the tick tick will deal with um, quite a few arguments if I can just check the code I've already written on this so render is quite short I might actually do that and it shows a few variables but then the tick is probably more important okay we'll do the tick first we um, need a few arguments in here uh, first one being the game it's just called game but then we need a, a boolean for up uh, boolean for down um, boolean for left and boolean for right and final boolean for the fire obviously pacman don't fire but we'll figure that out he's got to do something with the fire button i'm sure so import game and that's the start of our tick method uh, for the player which i'm just going to add these arguments to the comments and it's going to prompt me to add them there, I believe. No, I think this is private. Um, because we're going to be ticking outside the player class, that does actually need to be public, so I'm going to change that. But it, do it doesn't need to be static, this will be going player tick or game player tick. Player can be static in game, but we won't make this static so there's game there's up down oh, I'm clicking too fast for the computer right there's left that it's supposed to be next so left right and fire alright there's our render and tick outline ready to go uh, we're going to need a constructor in here and the constructor takes a few um, few variables all right so let's get NetBeans to create a constructor here we go and let's grab some comments Uh, we need attributes on right uh, the player is not going to have a file name but it is going to have an x which is an integer so in x needs a y and uh, needs a whip and uh, needs a height but I've also added the uh, name and lives okay so just adding these to the comments got the y the width the height the name and the number of lines okay so as you can see we've got quite a few variables to fill in just in these three classes here and they all need completing 
um, but a lot of them are set in the uh, in the player constructor including the image so let's get straight into that as it's uh, a new object being created I'm going to go with the system art print line uh, just to let the user know for accessing the player class and a new player uh, created I think that's all that's needed there and let's go into the uh, this dot x equals x this dot y equals y width and height the same uh, this is actually this dot p width equals width or w and this dot p height uh, equals h or height uh, this dot lines equals lines capital Alright, for collision we need this um, P1 rectangle equals new rectangle and just add these values in uh, X, Y, width, height which we'll have to change the width and the height on because we're not using the entire image that we're plugging in here so this won't come up correct straight away the, the rectangle x y width part all right okay then we need a move speed is firing player image and then we need uh yeah we'll move on to those last bits pals and that afterwards so move speed is just move speed uh, equals 18 at this point it could be fast, it could be slower, but excuse me uh, is firing I know Pac-Man don't fire anything, bear with me uh, it's false And then we need the player image and the player lives image, which are going to be identical but uh, drawn out, scaled differently, and used differently as well. One will be static, one will be moving. So, two images we need are P lives, uh, IMG, and player IMG. Okay, and both of these are going to be new textures. Which need a uh, path names argument and then it's uh, get image. Alright, so this should be fun trying to plug these in, but um, we need to. figure out our textures don't we mm. I'm not sure uh, new texture here is, is best I think we need to load the bitmap and then draw from the bitmap but we'll do it this way now I can always save those images out in Photoshop into 32 bit uh, 32 pixel by 32 pixel images so we can always do them as singles at this point and then move on sprite sheets at a later date so let's just say this is going to be in the res folder but it's going to be in uh, sprites 
and I forgot what we called it, but I think it was GB1 dash oops dash P1 uh, dash bright sheet. Uh, dash one and it doesn't need a PNG on that it starts with a uh, forward slash right so we need to import texture there and we need to copy this and this will actually be identical to this but we'll draw it out differently and in fact player lives won't actually be drawn out in the player class um, we're going to do a heads up display which displays all the, uh, I don't know how you call it, the, the score and the, the lives and that at the top of the screen. But that would be in the heads up display but it needs to be created in there because I think it's related to this class more than, more than heads up. Okay, spent enough time explaining that. We've got the images in. That is our first constructor for player. There are a few more things we need to add in there. Um, we need a system for lose a life. And the, the way where we deal with that is uh, under live sale, we we'll have another variable. Uh, called the start lives and we're going to set that to equal lives so we just uh, in instantiate it instantiate it that's the one uh, so start lives is going to equal lives which we just set to equal capital lives the argument that came through and then we need a lose alive count. Uh, this lose alive count is it? Yep. Nope. Count. Low count. Yeah, there's probably some science behind low counts, lose alive counts. But uh, I'm just going to do a basic system that starts with zero. It's not lost any lives, the player's not lost any lives at the start of the game and the start lives equal lives. Uh, but we'll do some calculations on these to figure out, you know, as the game updates if we're still there or not, have any lives or not. All right. Could be this lives here, but we'll, uh, we'll sort that in a second. Okay, so that is the player class now. Um, constructed them. If we just move on to the render quickly, this is quite a small class. We need to do a if check here on the player. There's no point in drawing the player out if the player is dead. So the if statement for render, if I can find it. Uh, if this is dead. Uh, it's equal to false, meaning the player is still alive. Then we need to uh, draw image um, g2d dot draw image. This could be a buffered image with image x, y, width, height, and no. So image x y y and no with the image observer there. Yeah. Uh, so the image on this is uh, image p1 img p1 if I called it that I may have called it something else we need the uh, x here we need the y Need the P width and the P height. And the final one is no, no image itself. Right, now we're getting somewhere. So I've spelled those right P1, 
one image. No. Oh, damn. So I'm just spinning things on my desk here trying to find this P1 image. Oh, it seems to be a different image that I'm rendering out of, but I can't find where I'm getting it from. Uh, in tick if you change the suit of the player you put uh, image p1 to a different um, variable so we need a line in uh, tick that sets this variable up so let me just copy this over here to tick and image p1 equals play image play img and we put it in the tick um nox is a good idea but because it might change image p1 might have a uh, if statement surrounding it so something like uh, if Computer stop. Yeah, that's not what I tell If um, suit equals zero, Oops. then set the image p1 to that image. Otherwise, set it to another image. Uh, the suit is to do with um, what the player looks like so you might have a uh, initial character and then after a power up you might have a different character wearing a different suit but it's still the same player just different images well we're not working with suits and power ups at this point so I'm just gonna set that aside and we need to set up this variable at, at the top as an additional image identical to this uh, as a buffered image and that should draw out now but we need all these variables setting up we just finished this uh, render method here a couple more lines of code so if if our frame class which is what uh, game design for in this case um, has a setting called show bounds this is good for developing uh, a developer option if you want to show bounds if you want to test your collision detection or test where the bounds are if they're calculating right you might have an option in your frame class to show the bounds of the sprites inside the screen and this is what I'm setting up now with a single variable so that would initially and eventually be set false uh, but while you're developing show bounds is a good thing to, to program in uh, I'm going to set the bounds color on this on the G2D uh, set color and we'll keep the yellow yeah for the player we'll keep yellow and then we need to draw a rectangle with these uh, G2B draw rectangle and that's going to be X it's going to be Y 
properties on x and y. This is um, p1 rect dot x. Uh, p1 rect dot r y. p1 rect dot width. Is that? Uh, width and P1 rec height. The XY width and height are actually coming from the uh, rectangle, rectangle that we created in the constructor here. But I don't think we did a capital R on the P1 rec, so I'm just going to change that now with M. Just so we know what that is. Okay, save. We need a show bounds in game design. Um, we need to set it to false to begin with. And um, we need to add it to the menu system at the top on the view menu. But like I said a few days ago, we're not at the view menu yet, so that will be false. And this code won't run at this point. Um, but it will all compile and should be correct. So the logic here is um, if is dead. Uh, variable on this player is false, so the player is still alive. Draw the player out um, at its current x, y, or with its set width and height uh, using this image that is subject to change throughout the game. Um, check if the show balance is selected in game design 4, and if it is, set the, the color of the G2D uh, to yellow and draw a rectangle around the player image or it will be around the player image these x's and y's will change with these x's and y's so bear that in mind this re rectangle will move around with the player uh, whether it's up down left or right but that's how I will render out the player and include the show bounds just for testing I mean in the final edition you'll probably have something that looks like that Oh, you might even delete those and it'll just be the draw image on there but for testing purposes I, I'd love to keep the show bounds in because it really does uh, you know ease the testing process you've got to make sure everything collides correctly so let's have a look at the so We need to do three if statements here concerning the player lives. So I'm just going to write those out here. So if lives are equal to three, then we need to draw three player lives here. Um, but I do believe I may have moved this code into the uh, heads up display. And this might be duplicate, but we haven't got to the heads up display yet, so we'll do it here. Now I'll do the three first, and then we'll copy it down to two and one. Uh, this is going to get tricky. We need three variables for x, y. Um, uh, for the x and y's of each of these so anyway it's going to be the g2d dot draw image and we need a similar variables to above but they're going to be different it will be uh, imgp lives capital L then here we need the um, Lives um, two X. The yeah, X this will be the first one, and where it's right. Bear with me on this. Uh, we need a P uh, P lives. 
to want Elon's girl. And then no, that was fun to talk about. Okay, and these are going to be identical, but we do need to change the uh, the X and Y's. So p lines 1x there and 0x there 0 y there and 1 there we could do some high level maths and, and calculate the x from one variable or use one single y in fact I think we can use one single y anyway but we'll break this down um, we will get rid of some variables along the way that's all I have to say at this point so that's three lines drawn with the correct x and y once they're set, which we don't know what they're going to be at this point, but we'll figure it out. We need a two and a one. So if the player's got two lives left, we're only, uh, is it the first two? No, it's the last two. And it's the final one on that. So lives one, lives two, lives three. Draw these lives images are in the top left hand corner part. Right. But they, they will only activate if the lives are greater than one or equal to or greater than one. Uh, if there's no lives left, or if we set the lives to four by accident, we won't get these lives labels um, images coming up. All right. So in the render, we're we're drawing the Im the player image out if it's not dead, um, showing the bounds if they're selected. If it's got three lives left, then we're gonna draw three player live images. Uh, if not, if it's got two, we'll draw two, and if it's got one, we'll draw just the one. Um, there is some more code we could use to draw more than three lives. Um, one life plus some text, like uh, times four or times five, whatever. But I think we'll leave that till later. I think we'll just do these now. Um, so this will be a uh, draw player section. And this section will be draw player lives. Alright, that's our render class. Moving on to the tick. Alright. So on the tick we need to load player lives image apparently as well as load that image. We do that before this line. In fact this line is no longer needed now. And this line is load player lives image. Which again might change if you get the power up, but um, we'll see. And this is IMGP lives uh, equals P lives image. P lives IMG. So that's uh, and if there are anything. We need it to change on the fly while it's uh, running. We could do it in there. Uh, same with the suits here. Not going to work on the powers on the suits at this point. So moving on to the uh, movements of the player. 
we need uh, if statements for these booleans for each one of them and the first one is going to be if left yeah if left so if the key left is being pushed the player should move but only move if it's x value uh, if I can find this out is greater than zero because we don't want it moving left off the screen and if it's not less than zero I uh, want x minus y equals uh, move speed which we can change at the top with that variable we created in the constructor and I think that's it for left uh, except at the same time we do need to copy this code and move the rectangle x I think yeah so it's p1 rect dot x same, uh, same distance anytime you press uh, anytime you move the player you want to move bars as well alright so that's our left done right so it's going to be opposite copy it so if right's pushed and x is less than a screen width what did we do with the screen width? I think it was 64. So we'll give it 6 for testing. Um, then it should stick just before it gets to the edge of the right hand side of the screen. And I believe these are plus, plus equals move speed. Move speed. Yep. Got a few mouse controls in there and the fire button. I think we'll come back to the fire. Uh, all right, so that's left, right, up, up and down is um, the Y. And obviously, uh, y being greater than zero means it's moving down. So that is a uh, down check, y greater than zero. As long as it's um, above the bottom of the screen, and we need the uh, y minus move speed. Is it move speed? believe it will be move speed, it might be move speed half or half a move speed, uh, this would be y and then the up is y, it's got to be less than 700 690 in this case again to do the test y all right, so that should move the player up and down. I've not got these the wrong way around, the plus and the minus. Um, within the limits of the screen, or with a with a buffer on the right and the top. So final one is fire. Alright, so a bunch of dodgy code in there. But again, we're going to check. Um, we don't want to be firing on the menu. 
if um, the menu system is in and fire is hit we really want to be uh, selecting or using not firing uh, and the player shouldn't be on the screen when the menus on the screen that doesn't make sense so uh, game menu equals no ie it's not on the screen then we want to um, check if uh, is firing because if you're already firing you don't want to fire again so the firing equals false first of all is firing um, equals true and then in here we don't have these yet but this would be um, player one bullet uh, dot file and then use the player as the argument to get the X and the Y of where the player is but that's how you would set up a system of firing bullets but we don't have a bullet class or player one bullet class yet so we'll leave that comment at that um, what else do we need in there? if you wanted to keep a count in the game of shots fired uh, either during the level or entire game you would uh, you put that in there as well shots fired plus plus but again we don't have any bullets fired yet so we don't know if you want to um, keep a record of the fired shots and Pac-Man doesn't fire shots so we need to figure out if he's gonna shoot bullets out of his mouth or we can need to create another character who has a gun who knows so <coughs> In addition here, you might have the um, additional uh, controls of mouse left. Um, mouse right and mouse fire, which would be, uh, they wouldn't be sent through the tick here they would be more set in the game class I think that's going to control the mouse because the mouse is actually in the game is it uh, part of the input of the game what's this one mouse right alright the same checks will be done in here uh, for the left and the right obviously you can't I'm going to say you can't use the mouse to go up and down, but I guess you can as well. So the mouse can move to the left as long as the uh, the X of the character is is within the screen. And this one is greater than 690, I believe. Great and six guy for the right. No less than six guy. And again, the same code would go in there. Um, although we wouldn't use the moon speed. You know, so this would be left. And instead of the move speed, we would use uh, game mouse speed. And possibly even times at 1.6, depending what we set the mouse speed at. Um, but that would have to apply to. the rectangle also 
So the Y, Y, the uh, the right would be the same. It just with different values. Then the mass by would be pretty much identical to this as well. With one exception, the addition uh, of fire equal fox. You can't have key fire at the same time as mass fire. That just doesn't make any sense. Unless you've got two different firing systems where you're actually setting a different bullet here. Um, you wouldn't want them both at the same time. You might have a fire one bullet and a fire two bullet, but they'll not be uh, completely different booleans as well. So that's how you would figure that out. But I think that's the. Uh, now, finally, after we've uh, dealt with all the moves, all the possible moves, we need to update the lives. So lives equals uh, player dot get p lives. Or we could just call that lives. Save the confusion. Right, so that updates the player lives just in case we lost one in the meantime. Um, right, so we got here. We need a setter for the lives. No, for the name. A getter for the, the lives. And then the rest is pals. Alright, there's a hit. If you hit with the enemy bullet. Is it dead? If you have no lives left, it's game over. And there's a loser life. So, hmm, okay. Let's do a loser life. This is a uh, public void. Lose a life. Better spell it right. And um, we need a dead as well, so just copy this down. But you could probably guess what's going on in this one. Uh, first line would be uh, is dead equals true. Alright, uh, so in the lose a life one, I think we all that's all there is. So uh, do a system dot uh, print line. Game over. And then set it as dead to true. Um, but at that point, after the, all the lives have gone and the player is dead, you might need a class uh, method in class called uh, lose game. And um, we'll set that off as well. But yeah, back to lose a life. Need to do a check. Loud count is less than one, so it's not already losing a life. And if lives is greater than or equal to one. And 
need to run lines minus minus. But again, in there, you might want uh, a couple more things inside this if uh, comments that obviously so if the player explodes after he's been hit um, you might want a player explode uh, dot p1 dot unit and again that's going to need the uh, the player for the x and the y then in addition you might want to uh, do a sound dot p1 at exp and you might want to play the explosion sound of the player dying or being exploded whichever but again we're not with the sound yet so we can't put that in but just to complete the player class a little more uh, and to show you that we will be implementing this sort of stuff in the future um, it's probably best to put it in there just so I don't have to type it again in the future or try and find the, the bits I've missed if I see someone commenting that I know it's like it's on the work list to do I know player one expose on the work list and p1 detonate um, is on the work list no the sound class is on the work list you know. I know this because I've got a comment and code that needs to be fixing. Uh, lose game again, we need to put something in there. Uh, just to tell the game that we're in this state of game over now and what to do next, you know. But um, that's your player class at this point with no powers in it. Um, We need a player hit to fire and lose a life. And I think that's about it. Right, so player one hit is going to be a public void again. And um, we're going to put it above lose a life. And this is just a uh, P1 hit. So if you're hitting a collision, uh, you need to fire off the loser lot. Um, then you need to uh, save. Lose a life uh, count is less than start lines. Lose a life uh, count plus equals one. Uh, else. Lose a life uh, count equals zero. I'm not sure why that's in there, what the logic of that is, but um, yeah, that's my uh, player one hit class without the uh, the suits and the power up, which I'm not going to put in at this point. That will do. So far, I have lose a life, and it'll do some calculations on the lose life count. Um, which really we should do in there, but we may move it at a later date. But if I move that code, then there's no need for the player one hit anyway. So that really is uh, the player class. But we need a get player lives, maybe even a set player lives, and then the rest is the power. I want a set name. So get lines, set lines, set name. Uh, right, set player score. 
is also a unit and get player score. All right, I thought I completed it, and then we've got so many more things to do. Let's start creating some of these attributes here. Which will take ages, you know this. Um, but let's start as we need to go on. So, can't find a variable x, so let's just do a uh, in x, in y, in w, uh, in H in fact it's not in W and in H it's uh P one wit P wit P heart lowercase H and W Okay, lines, start lines, lose life count. Lines, start lines, lose life count. Uh, let's first view. I need the P1 rep, the move speed, and it is firing. Uh, a couple of images. Let's do this. This will be a rectangle. And we need to import that. Which we can do down there. Well, we'll figure it out. I believe if we import all whole package, we should be alright. Create the move speed. I need, can't even do that correctly. Where's that done? Alright, so we're not we're not going to create it when I click it now. I want a field move speed now. <laughs> See, my computer is a joker. And that's an M move speed. It's fine. There's a boolean. And then we need a few buffered images. All right, this is IMG P1. Got the player lines image, and we need the player image. Okay, so all the variables from the constructor we need to import texture. Okay. And we need to import rectangle from ORT. I thought it was. Have we got ORT already? We do. Twice. Of the package. And the graphics is uh, got more than one, so we'll have that package too. So. Alright. Another one that I've got to go through and do all the uh, comments on. Still need buffered image important. Okay. Uh, 
Alright. So that's our constructor for player. A little complex, but basically we create a new player with the correct x, telling it which star uh, x and y, width and height is set, the lives are set, start lives are set to that same variable, lose the life count is initialized, uh, player one rectangle is initialized with the x, y, width, height, move speed set to 18, which might need to vary. But the player is definitely not firing when we start, so his firing is false. And we've got a player lives image and the player image itself, uh, all loaded into that constructor. Okay, so in the render, we've got a few more here. P1 lives image, we still need to create that, uh, which is another buffered image. So if I paste that there, oops. Copy all of that, undo the paste, paste it back, and get rid of that and add that. Okay, yeah, I missed out an image. Because if we power up the player one image, uh, which is actually this is what this is set, this is set to player image, but it could be set to player image A, you know. Um, next in the uh, animation, but we're always going to draw out whatever the value of that is. Um, but if we get a power up on the player one image and that changes, this will change, which means uh, this needs to change, which is already set to the player lives image that we started with. But if the player changes, your player lives image might want to change to us. So. Alright, onwards and upwards is dead. Why is that not? Uh, did I not create that? I thought it did. No, we've got is firing. So again, paste that. Copy, undo the paste. Set that. Okay. Alright, show bonds is in game sign, we'll do that in a minute, but we need some X, Y's and scales here. <coughs> and while we're not being allowed to make them, I don't know. Let's create the show bounds in game. Uh, add the import for it. And create field. Right, let's put it up the top, it's fine, I'll move it down. Show balance. Public static boolean. It does need to be uh, a public static boolean because we're accessing it outside the class. Okay. Start the comments on that. Alright, so we now have the show balance check here. Um, we're going to start it off for development purposes before we have the on the main menu as true. So it will show the balance when the player is um, showing on the screen. Uh, we can also rerun it and change that value. Alright, so that's that bit done. We're getting there. Draw player lives. We need the um, x's and the y's and the scale. But I'm not allowed to get net beans to create any of them apparently. So, what are these? These are ints. And let's just close the constructor. In fact, you might want that code as I'm going by. Um, let's do an in. P lives X. Undo the paste. Uh, paste in there. Uh, 
Uh, I'm just going to put a more on this line at this point because this is uh, a very professional way of doing it. Uh, there's all the axes. There's all the Y's, but the uh, Y might as well just be play lines Y. <coughs> and just use, <coughs> just use the same variable, because I don't think that's going to change. You're only going to put them in one vertical space on, on there. Really, the axes you need to worry about. So, just get rid of all those variables and just call that a Y. And then to uh, stop the errors coming up here, just put a Y in. And the player life scale left that so now I'm not sure if that's a double or and then I think it's an in because it's a reference to the the width and the height. And we'll put it in here. Just a simple in play life scale. Okay, so all these attributes here mean uh, I've still got code um, comments to do, but moving on. Alright, so our render class is now complete. We've got all the variables and even um, most of them are set, I think. Apart from the X and the Y's on there, which we will have to figure out. But uh, yeah, depends on the width of the image or the width of the player. P lives image, why is that not uh have I spelt that wrong? Is it IMG? No. Capital L. It is Thought I created that. Okay, and I think that's a tick done as well. Except for the mask left, mask right, mask fire. Are they actually in this class? Might sound a strange uh, question. They do appear to be. Yeah, and they're booleans as well, so we need to create those. And the get nice uh, module. So again, these aren't set at the top, so I'm just going to go with the uh, one liner. Mouse left, mouse right, mouse far. Come on. Uh, so still got a few errors left. And there to do with uh game needs a mouse speed and we need to get lives in there and then we're done for the player class. Uh Okay, field mass speed in game. Let's put it there, okay. And it's called it a double. I'm not sure it's supposed to be a double. I will have to check. Okay, save. Looking for mouse speed so I can put this right.
Alright, my school is a public static double, yeah, that's correct. Do I set it? Alright, setting tick. And it depends how fast you move the mouse across the screen to what it's set to, but it's just setting game tech um game tick. I don't know what's set up now or not. We'll come back to that because it's more finishing off the mouse control and we want to sort out the player and the, the key control first really. But that's almost done now. We need this one more module set. Uh, player get lights. Which I'm assuming. Let's put it at the top. And we need to lose game in game. Just where I want that. Alright, so this can go to the bottom. Just to remind me about the lose game, right? And that's going to return lives. Okay. And I think it needs to be probably. Because we might need to find out what the, the lives are in another class as well, game. Non static variable live cannot be referenced in the static context. Uh, let's try it without static at this point then. Save and then it's probably going to give me uh, errors of that. Yep. So it's just uh, get lives. Or is it uh, this dot get lives? Yeah. So if we use player get lives in another class or the player um, object in another class, we should be able to get the lives from, from game or wherever we need it. Alright, so lose game. If we are. Uh, we're at the state of lose game, we want to um, do a few checks uh, first in the lose game, where are we? save game, lose game, I'll do it here and copy it down, uh, we want a system art. Just say that's been called print line. Lose game. Uh, then we need to check that it's not a false positive. Um, this will be player dot get lives. Uh, does actually equal zero because if it doesn't then we have not lost the game we're just being cheated and at that point you want to set a uh, menu to a new lose menu or game over menu it's not really a menu it's just a screen uh, yeah, and then you want to pass the game in as uh, it might need some variables, and I might need to spell it right. Uh, but that is uh, based on the menu system. And you might want to also set the level number. Back to default, but we don't have a, a menu system or a level number at this point or level to deal with. So, uh, we're going to comment those, those two out at this point. 
but that would be uh, you lose game and you game over menu reset the level number and then set the menu to lose game uh, and that's in game isn't it save back to player which is player where was the other system up? That's got player on it as well. That's cool. Alright. So we need this uh this image. in the sprites folder if you don't currently have it so let me find that there we go PNG and it's a uh, copy and paste into sprite now what it's going to do is print out the whole sheet of these and we need to set some variables up to make sure it don't do that or render a different way instead of using the texture we need to use the load bitmap uh, but we'll figure that out uh, like I said it's 512 by 512 so these are about 16 or 32 so we'll get there but um, when we're moving left, we're going to run the left animation and right the right animation. So we need to set this up as that animation, depending on which way it's moving. But uh, always in the render class, we're just going to rely on just drawing that image out, whatever that image is set to, you know. Uh, so we've got that in there now. We need the texture, don't we? So player one, we already set up. And that's sprites, but it's GD1. Dash P1. That's sprite. Shoot. I don't know why I'm doing this, in fact. Um, in fact, I know I don't. This is the alternative to the uh, get image. And it also checks that. Uh, this texture can find this image because when we access the get image of the texture then these uh, variables load as well um, is that right? sprite sheet, sprite sheet, so we, in the player class we got it wrong in the constructor alright these should all refer to the same file without the png uh, so it's that there we need. Oops. Yeah, no, that's correct. All right, so we shouldn't have uh, any problems if we run this now. We won't actually have a player on the screen because we haven't set one up in game yet. I actually do set that up in levels, so uh, we might be able to do it quickly in game there, but it'll just be code that we're gonna delete. So let's see if we run it now. Have we got any errors? Find the player one sprite sheet. And got a problem with the game thread. Uh, screen's got a no point. Because we've not created a player in game. So yeah, we just need to do that. Um, I think I'm going to do that in a constructor. But lose game means moving from above there. 
save control and um, we go before quick game but it needs comments still Lose game, quick game. Uh, now we need a player, and the player is going to be set in the constructor, I believe. But it's going to be moved over to uh, the constructor level when we create that. So game constructor we do all these things here we get the mouse input and the input for the keys uh, initiate the game which starts the game so before that we need the game the player equals did I fix that error we were just seen a minute ago I can't remember yeah now I'm doing it now player Okay, new player. And uh, we need some variables as arguments. So that's really helpful. Uh, game width shared by 2 plus 10 uh, for the X. Seems about right. Let's add oops. I'm up there instead of in that game width by 2 plus 10. So the X is uh, slightly off center. Uh, the Y is going to be game height. Uh, minus 120 at this point. Do a 80 by 80 on the uh, width and height. Game. Dot get p name. And three lights. All right. Get player name is creating an app. Get player name. So this is just going to be um, player get get name. I believe wherever it's been put. Here we go. Player. Dot. Alright. Name is it? Uh, player, did we do a get name? No, we didn't. Did we even set up a name? In the constructor, no? Name. We didn't do anything with the name, no. Uh, player name uh, I've missed a, uh, a variable out there so the name here should have been set after the height so it's uh, this dot no, just player name uh, equals name. So I'll create that as a field, recognize it as a string. Uh, set player name, it should be here, set name even. Uh, 
what is the game set name? So easy to get confused with these uh, these variables. There's so many references to the same thing. All right, player name. I'm gonna do a. Uh, set on this I think yeah I've got computers freezing all over the place huh? that really helps Alright, so we need a set name and player. But we also need a play name. Our play name is what's being drawn up. Yeah, confusion up. There's a variable called player n in game as well, you see, and that's being set and player name in game. Alright. Need a set and a get a player name. Let's see we need it now. Get around that set or is it just a set off? Just a set right now. So we need to set this uh, play name variable up. But it can't be private and final. So the player name generate that will do, but uh, let's change that to name or confusion save. Um, set player name complete in there. Now in game, uh, if you need both, get player name and set player name. And the get player name is going to be. Return him. Play that in. But before that, we need to check that uh, play that in equals no. We need to set the player name. And then return it. But then we need to set player name. Okay. Underscore Nick 
<coughs> All right, then we just need the player and certain up, which is a string. I don't know if it's static or not. Put it on a string player and. Oh, get in there, get in there. Needs to be static to be referenced with a static word. And these may need to be public as well. Uh, where did I put up? Static. Oh, I don't. Copy those. And um, we'll put them above the lose game. Maybe even above the sound. Yeah. Alright. That's the gap. And that's the cell. That's all that. Right. So if we run it now, we should have the uh, player created. Just uh, with three lines with the name player one. and no errors in the screen. So let's run that now and see if we can call that a day. Obviously, if it does come up on the screen, it's gonna be the full image with all, all the sprites, but uh, let's see. No, uh, but we've got the show balance. I don't know why that image is not coming up on the screen. That is pretty bizarre. Uh, but if we move up the screen, Let's get focus inside the uh, game. Oh, left, right. Right. Uh, the reason it's not updating yet is we need to uh, start taking uh, the input. And um, we've not done that yet. And um, that's somewhere else in game we need to set up. So let's get the tick method. Alright, so. Because uh, we don't want it. Uh, because we might use the menu in the one of the um, arguments we put through and take care of is uh, uh, input, which is the key input, uh, and then it's tick. And in the tick, we've got game, so this, uh, need this menu, and we need this player. Okay, it's going to tell me the input's not going to tick, I'm sure. Alright. Anything else we need to take in? Alright, so let's have a look in the input class, key input. Doesn't have a tick. Yes, it does. 
Right, so we need to put those arguments back into the tick method on key input. They already exist there, I remember typing them in, but we are uh, coming to the mark. Then we need to add the player tick inside there. Uh, if the menu is, is not. Otherwise, we need to tick the menu. Right, so the input tick, uh, we need the key input. Double click on the key input, find the tick. It's just got game at the moment, but as we typed it before, we need all those three. So, how would we uh, get rid of all that? Uh, we need to import these. Now, menu doesn't exist at this point, so I might have to create it. Um, and player needs importing. But then we've got the player tick down here already set up, so we can uncomment that now. And import the player. Alright. But then we need to create the menu class uh, for that one. Uh, it's asking me if I want to uh, create menu in the input package. I don't want to do that. I want to actually create a menu package for it. But I'm not going to start on menus today. I might just create this class, just get rid of this error. Um, and it might need a tick as well, but we can comment that out. So, alright. So, I was saying the other day with the um, the architecture menus are outside the the actual architecture but we're going to put them inside this project and we're going to put them inside another package and this is the actual menu class which other menus will extend or override anyway um, but the package is going to be uh, menu also so all the menus can go in this package and all of them will extend menu but inside here we need a tick for menu um, it's identical to the player tick so I'm just going to go in here and uh, copy this in fact copy it all why not copy and go to menu and just create that tick yeah we can import game Close it off, ready for next time. So, menu's got the tick from player. And where will we key import? So, now we just need to import menu. Game design menu menu. And that gets rid of that. So, uh, the logic here is. Um, If uh, menu that's passed through in the argument uh, does not equal null, render the menu. Uh, else, render the player. Um, because they are identical, I'm just going to copy and paste that in there. Change that to menu. And that's the logic of the key input tick class. Uh, if your menu's on, then you want the, the menus getting the tick of up, down, left, right, fire. If not, you want your player with the up, down, left, right, fire. The menu is no, because we didn't set it in game before we sent it through, so that's fine. And now I'm going to run it, so don't forget to add that line of code there. Uh, don't forget to create the menu class to get rid of that. Uh, with a tick in it. Yeah, the menu class with the uh, of this parameter. You have to import it, so you have to create it to be able to import it. Then add those lines of code, and then you've got your player tick, menu tick, logic. 
and now we should be able to uh, play and move that bounds around try and find out where that image is oh no we've got an error input tech erroneous code Uh, right, what we got? Incompatible types. Object cannot be to convert to menu. Yeah. So this is still um, an object in here. We need to change it to a menu object, which is just there. Look. And then we need to import menu as well. Save. No. No need to import menu. We still got an error. Alright, it thinks it's an alt menu, it's not. So we're gonna have to get rid of alt. Just for a second while I import the right one. Save that. Now we need the menu which is at the bottom of this and import game.design.menu.menu Hooray! And now we can re-import canvas and or I could probably just do it myself Just above the star. Oh, oh wait. Now we might have confusion with um, Java. Is game gonna give me the same? Uh, game design reference, it's got a problem now. Save. Uh, I didn't think there was a problem, it's just NetBeans being a bit slow. Alright, so we now have our new menu class and our new player class. Obviously, there's nothing in menu except the tick, um, but we've fixed all the errors that we had in key input with this logic and in screen with this logic. Uh, rendering that, we can now actually render the uh, menu as well which means we need a uh, render uh, method from player also both identical so in fact they're all identical from this point on with the renders everything is rendered from the screen class and uh, they all use the same parameters uh, so that's the menu so got a render and a tick Render and graphics, yeah, import those, close that off. Okay, so there's a bare bones class for menu rendering tick, which are used in here as in a screen class. So if the menu is not null, render the menu. If the menu is no render the player level powers and elements. This is the logic there. But yeah, getting there. Let's finally see if that's complete. No runtime error, J panel add, game design, ball, menu, no, game. Yeah, it's it's gonna be uh dodgy all day now you can see it net beans is just in one of those moves there's no wrong with adding stuff to the panel we, we've done that already it's just run into an error and it reckons 91 this one here and running the code so it's because um, games not got the canvas imported I believe or with uh, we're getting confused here between the alt menu which is one object and our menu which we just created so I'm going to get rid of the alt package at that point it's causing problems in there now we need to uh, import the canvas so I'm just going to do that as a single line 
And then if there's any other errors, which you assume they are, we'll just do single imports on these two. Uh, graphics and render hints. It just makes for a longer list of imports, but it really does uh, confuse Java if you use keywords like menu. Alright, now there should be no confusion with the menu and no erroneous code. There we go, more erroneous code. Alright, so it's running the game, it's started to stay as well. Ninety one is the panel and hundred and eighteen is game design four, which should be fine. Is anything in game design four constructor that's wrong? I think the menu might need setting up. State as well. See there's nothing around here. And it will cause the ad not to work except for the canvas not being employed. Screen render this. Right, I think screen renders just the graphics. So screen render. Oh it's graphics 2D, that's right. Now I'm just going to be looking for the error all day and it's going to take hours, I can see it. Well, it's got to be in the game. Canvas unrunnable in game works. New screen. New player. Player's got to be created before it can uh, tick. Import tick. Why has that been me? Does it need to be static? <sighs> Stress. Do we need to set the menu to no? It seems to have a problem uh, adding the game to the screen, but that would imply that it's no longer a canvas. So as you can see, we import a canvas, so we know that's the case. Uh, import. No, import's needed. got to be the menu All right, so it's after the status bar is created then the game's added we haven't changed anything in the status bar I'm pretty sure where is the status bar? So now we create the game. We create the status bar and try out the game. Strange. Alright, so no reference to menu there. Got a reference to menu here, but it's only checking if it's null. 
we haven't added anything to the game to, to make it not work or have an erroneous code. It's still the same object. It's creating an exception in the thread when we come to add it to the JPON. And that's not good. Is player extending anything that it shouldn't? Because it's only started since the menus come on. Right? It's trying to tick the menu. Seems to be fine. I think we made the menu final, didn't we? Uh, in game. Oh, public menu menu. Try taking the public off. Is any initiate code for the menu? Let me check. Oh, this is really uh, annoying the shit out of me now. completely lost uh, render and tick and uh, menu are just empty anyway they were overridden by the others um, and there's no constructor in menu either just a whole bunch of variables oh. I think uh, menu is what's causing the problem there. So any line of code with menu, I'm just going to comment up. Why is screen and player got a problem there? Needs to be public. Alright, so undo that, make that public, get rid of those errors. Right, this is um, happening because the menu is null, and I'm, I forgot how to get past that little check there, so um, we're not going to render out the menu. Uh, we're not going to tick the menu. Now if that don't do it, I'm really lost as to what the problem is. Alright, so. Let's try playing that. <laughs> right, no idea why that is. I think we need to do a bit more work on uh, menu. 
before we start adding things in. But if I uh, click inside here now, we should get the key inputs. Move left, move right, move down is on up, and move up is on down. So we need to swap those around. But yeah, we have the bounds, we have the image coming through. We've got a star on a player, but he's back to front. I knew the up and down would be wrong. Ah, it's a key import. Let's just switch up and down here. No, I'm joking. Um, let's make it right in player. So it's in the tick. Uh, down is plus. Plus equals. And up is minus equals. Okay, save, play again. Okay, all right, so because we told the player size to be um, 80 pixels by 80 pixels, that's the bounds uh, of the player, but it's also the size of the 512 by 512 image, it's actually scaled it down. It's using the same image but it scaled it down. What we need to do is tell it just use that corner piece and then scale it up to 8 by 8 We'll figure that out. Um, my up and down is now moving correct now. And left and right we've got. So there's the player class. Sorry it took so long, but uh, can't make these things do what you want them sometimes. So menu classes is an annoyance for the day. Right. We've gone too far off the edge, so uh, we need to create a new game at that point, but that doesn't go anywhere. Um, I think we need to create the new game, so you can figure it out. It wants a width and a height, and I could just put them in, but it'll probably give me another error anyway. But um, that's how we left it today. Sorry it took so long, but... Uh, uh, down to 100, 110 frames still, and we have key movement. Don't have mass movement, but we got key movement. And we need a, a bounds check for the bounds of, in fact, yeah. Now I can't move down because it's too far up. But I can move up, but I can't see it, so. Yeah, we need to uh, do the bounds of the screen. Alright, see you next time. Don't forget to like and subscribe.